I'd like to set you a puzzle. The puzzle is about a cat and a mouse, and as is traditional in cat and mouse situations, <laughs> one is chasing the other. Uh, the mouse is super quick compared to a cat, even though the cat's pretty quick. But in this case, to keep it interesting, the mouse is, without realizing, run into a pond. There's its whiskers and little tail. And it can go anywhere in the pond because the cat... Worst mouse ever. What do you mean? It's, like, it's got to be small, isn't it? Like, yeah. I could draw it big and then you'd be like, worst pond ever compared to the mouse. Anyway, to scale then, here is the cat. Good enough? No. How's that? It's got to have ears. All right, ears. That's not bad. That's better. So for the sake of the puzzle, the cat is going to sit on the edge, but it can cruise around the edge, waiting for the mouse to leave the pond. So it's like stalking the edge. Exactly. Now, I think it's believable that all, even though the mouse could run quicker than the cat on land, in water it's going to slow down. But it can swim. We're not going to... We'll do the modelling situation, you know, assume some things like the mouse is not going to drown. Uh, it can swim. The, assume the cat doesn't actually go in the water, although it probably could, and swipe it from the edge. All of that stuff. Let's just assume it sensibly for puzzle world. And let's assume the cat can run four times quicker than the mouse can swim. In fact, that's the only numerical detail I'm going to give. The cat can walk or run four times quicker than the mouse can swim. And that's it. So the simple question now is, can the mouse escape? There we go. It's not a Ben Sparks video without a computer animation. Well, a bit of a GeoGebra file with some nice brown paper to represent our pond as ever. Uh, we've got a cat who runs around the edge. Luckily, he looks in the right direction. I'm very proud of that animation. I'm very glad that everyone else is appreciating that. The mouse can go anywhere he likes. Uh, if he goes the other side, the cat does check where he's going. But let's assume he starts at the center. And there's a couple of things to sort out first, is that one tactic the mouse could do is the obvious one of run away, in this case, uh, swim away. <laughs> but you could just say like, why don't you as a mouse just swim away from the cat? And what I mean from that is like, if you imagine a line from the cat to the mouse, wherever that is, imagine that line, and the mouse swims in the opposite direction. And I can show you that happening actually. So I'm gonna click on this is button up here is the away tactic. And the reason I'm showing you is that it doesn't work. And you can see the mouse is following this little arrow, which is moving around depending where the cat is. But the cat is so quick that you can always kind of get around to head the mouse off. Even though it looks like he was going to make it, the cat come around real quick. And we get these actually nice patterns are turning up, which are typical of these curves of pursuit. They're usually kind of curvy. They're not always easy to model mathematically. And these ones are, you know, they're almost getting symmetrical, but there's a little bit of randomness. You can see the cat wobbles when he gets in line because he's, he's constantly trying to move, but he doesn't need to move because he's already as close as he can get to the mouse. But it's pretty obvious after watching this for a few seconds, this is going to repeat, even if it's not going to be exactly the same path, the mouse looks like he's doomed. So the run away tactic or swim away tactic doesn't work, which means if you've been thinking about that on your little pause where you were just thinking about it, you should probably stop thinking about it because it's not going to get there. I, well, I think it's a pretty sensible tactic. It'd be, it would be a stupid thing not to try it first. And it's difficult to sort out in, on paper with mathematics whether it's going to work. So a nice thing to do quite often for mathematicians, even physicists do this sometimes, is to model it on a computer and realize very quickly it doesn't work. I'm gonna suggest a hint now though, uh, that I think the mouse can escape. And therefore it's instructed to think, if this isn't working, how else could he possibly do it and get away from the cat? So again, if you wanna have a think about it, have a think about it. Mouse has not got away yet. The obvious tactic of running away or swimming away doesn't work. And uh, one other tactic, which a lot of people tell me with this puzzle that might be sensible is instead of running away from the cat, Maybe you should run towards the point which is furthest away from the cat. So I think that's obviously, in this case, the, the pond edge point opposite the cat. Now, that, that, it sounds like that's the place you want to be if you can arrange it, because the cat's not anywhere near to eat you. Uh, of course, that's the opposite point tactic. So I'm going to show you what happens if you try a mouse doing the opposite point tactic. Here we go. You see the green arrow is now heading towards the point opposite the cat, uh, which is chugging away around because the cat is quick and it keeps chasing the mouse and this angle is trying to, it's going to close the angle and it just means the mouse goes in circles because he's not moving quick enough. Obviously the puzzle would be different if the mouse was quicker, but it wouldn't be as interesting because the mouse could just swim through. So I just wanted to point out another sensible tactic to try, swim away from the cat towards the opposite edge doesn't work either. And this time he just goes around in circles. 
There are two more tactics I want to show you, neither of which really help, but together they're quite good. So let me introduce some vocab which I've just made up, which uh, will help me refer to these tactics. One of them I'm going to call the dash tactic, which is swim away, but not away from the cat or towards the opposite edge, but just towards the nearest edge of the pond. I feel like a sensible tactic. If you're in a pond and you want to get out, you don't swim the long way. So on the screen, this looks like this. So I've got a dash tactic, and the moment my mouse is closest to that point over there, it's kind of like the radius from the point through the mouse to the edge. And if I click on dash, it just heads towards the edge. Now, obviously, that wasn't very successful. But it depends where the mouse is to start with, right? If I put the mouse on the other side, a long way away from the cat, and he's close to the edge, then a dash will get him out. That doesn't solve our problem, but it means there are some places in the pond where if the mouse can get to, I know he can get out with a dash tactic. Second tactic then is not a dash tactic, it's a circling tactic. And this doesn't help you get out, but it does help you get away. So what I mean here is that the mouse can move in a circle and this point here is worse for the mouse than this point, despite it being the same distance from the edge. So I think this one's better because in terms of an angle, he's further away from the cat, which means measuring this angle, which I've just drawn a line on here, it's a good indication of whether the mouse is far away, like opposite, or close. And actually, I think that kind of summarizes the cat's technique as well. The cat will try and minimize this angle, and if the mouse has got any sense at all, it should try and maximize that angle. But it doesn't always work. So here's a circling tactic. If you're near the edge of the pond, it's a problem because the, the cat is much quicker. For example, the mouse is just circling, but it's clearly moving slower around the angle than the cat. And if the cat was actually doing something sensible instead of just going round, let's actually make him pursue, he'll get to the mouse and he'll stop. And then the circling tactic doesn't work anymore because whatever the mouse does, the cat can keep up. But if I get further away from the edge, if I put it over here, you can see that the cat catches up, but just not quite as quick which might give you a clue that if I'm right near the middle, it's pretty obvious that even if the cat's really close in the angle, the mouse can get away now. So the circling tactic means sometimes I can get away from the cat in terms of the angle, and sometimes I can't because the cat catches me up. And those two tactics, maybe, uh, maybe it's time for another pause. With those two tactics, I think there's a glimpse of hope. Those two tactics, the dash tactic and the circling tactic, which sorts out whether you can get the cat opposite you or not. And let's sort them out one at a time. So the, the dash tactic. Let's assume for the dash tactic, we are opposite the cat. So if the cat's here, the mouse is on this line, the other side of the center. But if he's at the center, I don't think he can make it. And maybe you can think about why. The cat has to go around here. Let's assume some things, which includes this radius of the pond, which I've never told you. I'm going to assume it's one, and you can scale it up if you want. The distance the cat has to go around is half of a circumference. So around is two pi times one halved. It's pi meters. Let's go with meters for the sake of units. And let's assume there's some speeds going on. Let's assume the cat's speed, for the sake of any other argument, is four meters per second. Uh, it's a quick cat. And the mouse is therefore one meter per second. And that's the only number we set this up with. The cat is four times quicker than the mouse can swim. And you can see that uh, if the, the mouse from the center will, let's say it's one, is gonna take precisely one second to get out. But how long does the cat take to get around? Well, this is, everyone's like, oh, which, how do you calculate this? I think the, uh, speed equals distance over time thing is a really basic equation that we really need to use carefully. How long will it take the cat to get there? Time is distance over speed. The distance is pi, so it's pi divided by uh, speed, which is four, is pi by four seconds. So it's quicker than a second. It's because pi is less than four, this is less than one second. The cat is there waiting. First thing with a dash tactic is clearly the mouse can't dash from the center. So the obvious question is, where can he dash from? And it's the same calculation, right? He's got pi by four seconds at most to get out. So Because the cat can get to any point on the circle within... Yeah, the furthest away point is pi by four seconds away. So actually he can only get to the edge 
when that edge is less than pi by four away. Because he goes at one meters per second, we've, we've set these numbers up to be quite nice. But that circle has distance pi by four there, which means this distance in here is one minus pi by four. And you begin to realize very quickly that my scale on this drawing is terrible. We need to know roughly where that line is, because outside that line, if I'm opposite the cat, I'm home and dry, I just dash for it. And it should, let's just check. You're, you're all estimating this on the video at home, but one minus pi by four, 0.21 from center, dash tactic. It's like an event horizon, Ben. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Like inside that, you're doomed with your dash tactics. Outside that, if you're opposite the cat, you're okay. So now the question really is, can I get opposite the cat outside that event horizon? So we actually, now you recognize why the circling tactic is important because that's the one that concerns whether we can get opposite the tack. So let's talk about the, uh, did I call it the tack? I meant the cat reversing things. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the circling. This in some ways is, feels harder to sort out first because like running in circles feels difficult. But if the cat is running at four meters per second and the mouse is at one, and actually what we care about is how quickly I can get round compared to the cat going round. How big a circle can I keep up with the cat if it's four times quicker than me? I think on a moment's thought, it's relatively obvious that if the circle is four times smaller, I'll be doing the same thing as the cat. So actually this circle I've just drawn here, if that's four times smaller than the big one, there's a scale factor of four going on. The distance round it is four times shorter than the big one. That's how scale factors work. And so at that point, which is a quarter of the size, in which case that is three quarters, and the distance in there, it's looking pretty messy thanks to my repeated drawing of mice, but it's a one quarter. On that circle, I can keep up with the cat in terms of angles, which means inside that circle, I can outpace the cat in terms of angles. So which means I think one quarter, otherwise known as 0 0.25 meters from the center, my circling will work. And at this point, these two numbers and their comparison is important. I'm deliberately sort of talking slowly to let the realizations drop in. This is a nice puzzle where the maths I've done is, is really lower than GCSE level maths. And yet it wasn't obvious to me at all when I first started playing with the cat and the mouse. But let me show you on the diagram on the screen. So now we've established that the, uh, there are two event horizons, if you like, we can put them on here. So the dash boundary is this line here. In fact, that was the boundary we said was 0.21 away from the center. And you can see it's about right. And the circling boundary is the outer line there. So inside that, I can circle okay. And outside the dash boundary, I can dash okay. Can you see what I see? That there's a little gap in between, which I'm gonna officially call the mouse sweet spot. If it can get in there, then not only can it circle to get away from the cat, it can also, when it's ready, i.e. opposite the cat, it can just peg it. And it should make it. Which is weird because just swimming away from the cat won't make it, and just swimming towards the opposite bank from the cat won't make it, but this tactic, according to the maths, should make it. So I set up Jojibro, which doesn't know about these boundaries, to I tell, told the mouse to get in that sweet spot and then when it's opposite the cat or close enough, like about 179 degrees or thereabouts, peg it. And I was really quite nervous when I'd done the coding to see if it would actually make it because the mouse says it should make it. And no other tactic on the model had worked. So I'm going to press play if you're up for it. I'm up for it, man. I'm, uh, I was I'm born for this moment. I'm glad, Brady. <laughs> That's why you make these videos. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start the mouse in the center of the pond because I know that if it's anywhere else, I could still swim to the center and solve it from there. And let's see what happens. I'm going to click on uh, escape tactic. And what I hope the program will tell it to do, it will swim out until it gets into that sweet spot, which is that small little region. And then it will circle until it recognizes this is opposite the cat. You'll see the angle go up to about 180 or within some tolerance. And then it'll peg it. And I have no idea where it'll end up to peg it, but if it gets to the edge, uh, the exciting payoff will be a bit of red text saying the mouse has escaped. That's what I'm hoping for. You ready? I'm ready. Found the sweet spot very quickly. It's only just inside the sweet spot. So you see the angle is increasing, but it's not quickly increasing. Come on, mouse. Whoa. It's made it. I agree that would be a tense moment for the mouse. But if I assume, as I did right at the beginning, that the mouse is much quicker on land than the cat, I could just imagine it going, uh, and the cat's like, oh, 
But I think the maths tells me that wherever the mouse starts, whatever the cat's doing, if it's four times quicker than the mouse can swim, it can escape. So how fast does the cat need to be for the mouse to never escape? Oh, it? Brady, I like your style. You're doing what all mathematicians want to do in their heart of hearts. And actually most humans do, you're generalizing, right? The four is critically chosen so that that 0.21 and the 0.25 are really close together and then the right way around. If they're the other way around, you, you can only dash from a point where you can't circle, whereas we had a sweet spot. Um, and actually I've got a slider on GeoGebra so I can change the ratio of the speeds and you can see whether the sweet spot increases or decreases. So since you asked, <laughs> let's, uh, let's move the mouse back to the center. Uh, let me turn these two off. That is the region that I call the sweet spot. The critical region is maybe a more technical name for these sort of things. At the moment the ratio is four. If I change that to 4.1, can you see the sweet spot's gone really quite small? Which means if the cat is 4.2 times quicker, is all over. Somewhere between 4.1 and 4.2 looks like is the end of the story. If I go the other way, you can see the sweet spot is really big. This is not a surprise. If the cat's slower, the mouse has got a better chance. And in fact, it gets to a point where if the mouse is not quick enough, even at 3.2, in fact, if I go between 3.1 and 3.2, you can see that something, there's, it's all sweet spot in the middle. And 3.1 and 3.2 do bracket a famous number, which I'm sure people have heard of and I've used in fact called pi. So it's to do with actually the, the speed compared with pi here. If it's less than pi, it's all sweet for the mouse. Uh, and in fact, it can dash from anywhere and, and get out. So there's a really tiny area and four is this lovely chosen. Whoever came up with this puzzle, I haven't managed to track down who originally came up with this puzzle. It seems to have been around a long time, but I hadn't heard it until a couple of years ago when someone told me about this puzzle. We were sitting in a bunkhouse in the Lake District around fire and he said, I've got a puzzle for you, and just told me about the cat and the mouse. And I don't know, it was a bit arrogant perhaps. I was like, this is going to be a simple puzzle. Completely flummoxed me for a week. I was thinking about it driving back from the Lake District. And when I solved it, I was really pleased that it, it wasn't that I didn't know the maths. It was just that it was a nice puzzle. And they've chosen the four really well, because any other number, much bigger than four or much smaller than four, uh, and either it's too easy for the mouse to escape, or it just always uh, gets caught. So that's the cat and the mouse puzzle. Uh, a bit of pie and a bit of pond. So if you like challenging problems like the one we've just shown you, but maybe you want slightly better pictures than Ben's mouse here, Brilliant might be the place for you. Brilliant have sponsored today's episode and they have really cool daily challenges like these. Have a look at them. This one about hitting a ball around a corner appeals to my brain. Obviously I'm going to click on this one. That's pretty interesting stuff here. And look at that. That is quite a shot, but how could it be played? To check all this stuff out, go to brilliant.org slash number file. That's not only going to introduce you to the brilliance of Brilliant, but it also sets you up for 20% off their premium subscription. Premium means you get access to not just the free stuff that's on the site, but all the archives, all the puzzles, all the courses, all the daily challenges. That address again, brilliant.org slash number file. Use the slash number file so they know you came from here and check them out.